Hi, this is Father Louis Skirty with Friends of the Word. We thank you for joining us each week with the homily of the week. This is the fifth Sunday of Ordinary Time, and we continue understanding Jesus' messages to us and his challenges. Let's share this during the homily and pass this on to your family and friends. God bless you and thank you for joining us. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, You are the salt of the earth. But what if salt loses its taste? With what can it be seasoned? It is no longer good for anything but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city set on a mountain cannot be hidden nor do they light a lamp and then put it under a bushel basket. It is put on a stand, a lampstand, where it gives light to all in the house. Just so, your light must shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I guess to know the value of salt in the days of Jesus would be a little significant. Why is he telling us we're the salt of the earth? The word salary comes from sale, salt. The reason, because that's how the Roman soldiers got paid, in salt. So it was a golden equivalent, you might say. Salt was very important. It was a, pre a preservative. It was used for healing wounds. It was used in so many parts of, 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 of life in the people of that time. Imagine Jesus saying, you are the salt of the earth. The, the earth needs you. It needs your light. It needs your power. It needs your flavor. And if you lose, then it's good for nothing to be thrown down and trampled underfoot. And not even that is an accident in Jesus' words, because we'll line the pathways with it, like, uh, like a little rubble, like little stones. we we'll line the pathway with salt, that, of course, it's a rock, rocky element. But that's not what we're here for. We're here to learn about the salt of the earth in our ministry, in our lives. And let's go back to Isaiah. So you want to know what... Um, direction we have in being the salt of the earth, sharing your bread with the hungry, sheltering the oppressed, clothing the naked, don't turn your back on your own. That's how we're given the guideline as to how to be salt of the earth. He's not talking about elements to, to preserve or elements for our food. He's talking about elements for the preservation of our faith and the sharing of our faith with others, with flavor, with zest. And I wonder how many of us live in a way so as to tempt the outsider to imitate us because we are so salty. My, my nephew once joked about his, because there are a lot, of, a lot of other ways we can re refer to salt, but his father wasn't in a good mood that particular day. And he says, he, he gets a little cartoon off of his phone and he puts his father's picture in the middle of a pretzel and he sends it to me. He says, old salty is at it again. I said, oh goodness. I never showed that to Chris. <laughs> Don't even talk about it. He'll know now that, 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 that we're talking about it. So there's, a, there's good news and bad news around salty. And Jesus is asking us to be the salt of action. And again, I ask ourselves, how many of us tempt people around us to imitate us, to just get a flavor of what we're all about, what our faith is all about, because it's so flavorful, so right on the spot. We have to think about that. And light of the world. How do we enlighten one another? How do, how do we impress with our faith one another, the outsider? 
You know, we're, there's such a movement in our world today, and I'm not going to go beyond our borders, but in our world today, and all the theologians are talking about it, Catholic magazines are talking about it, and the, the, the many forms that are filled out by people of various backgrounds, and how many check off the box, and we've talked about this before, religion, this, that, that, N-O-N-E, check off. Nuns, not, not the religious nuns, but none. There are so many nuns, N-O-N-E-S, in our own community, in our own world. And you, why? Why are there so many of them? And they're creating a whole new religion. A religion that's being usurped from the scriptures. Feeding the hungry. Working for justice. Working for the rights of people. Many of our millennials are very, very involved with that. Of course, I can't speak broadly about all, but there's so many people, young people, who are devoted to the righteous, but yet they don't look at the church so often to see an example. Maybe because we've scandalized. Maybe because the churches, the Christian communities, forget the other denominations, let's, let's look at ourselves for a few moments. Maybe we've, we've scandalized by our division, by our jealousy, by our careerism, by our infighting. And the priorities went right down. Bread for the hungry, homeless, security for the poor, reaching out to the immigrant. We're too busy so often. That's what, that's what, what Isaiah is really upset about. Because he's writing the period in which people are losing their faith and what they're doing instead, they're going to church. Temple. But they're going to church. They're lighting more candles. They're doing no, more prayers. And right outside their doors, the hungry, the poor, the homeless. But we're praying. See, we're praying. So that, that's not our business. And Isaiah makes it very clear. Your business, our business, is feeding the poor and giving drink to the thirsty what we know as Jesus' whole mandate. And there are so many of those young people in our community, maybe all ages, maybe right across the board, that they want to protest. And they protest the last few weeks. How many protests there have been uh, in our country alone? Marching for this, marching for that, marching for rights. I, I don't know how many of those marchers went home justified the next day or went home and said, let me see, how can I put into action what I march for? How can I feed the hungry, give drink to the thirsty, supply space for the homeless? If you march and shout and carry banners, that's not enough. And that's not the kind of action the scriptures are talking about. Rolling up our sleeves and really giving food to those who need it. From our, from our abundance, from our own charity. Giving of ourselves. The challenge is there. And it's funny, one of the protesters a few weeks ago, I, I, I don't even know her name, protested, we need a revolution, and we should overthrow the country, and all this nonsense. And I'm thinking, this woman who's speaking, and, and she speaks for a lot of people in Hollywood, right? You want to have a revolution? Open your wallet. You want to have a revolution? Put your hands into the bank that's saving your money and give it to the poor. Work for justice. Don't talk about it because you have the limelight. Work for justice. Feed the hungry. Drink to the thirsty. Taking care of the homeless. That would be a revolution. In our society, we would be turning it inside out if as a society that was a priority, not just talking about it, doing something about it. Whether here at a parish level, your local level, at home, your neighborhood, there are so many opportunities. And Isaiah, he mocks those who go to, well, temple, those who go to church and don't carry out the mission of what church is all about. He's making fun of them. You know, you can make a pretty liturgy, you can do singing, you can sing in hell. It's not going to save you. If your actions... We're going to have to be 
We don't have to guess what the actions are. If their actions are people who share our bread with the hungry, who shelter the oppressed and the homeless, who clothe the naked, who don't turn our backs on those in need, whether it's right there, our, ne our next door neighbor, or globally. We come to worship, but I, I hope we don't come to worship to feel good. We come to worship to connect to God and his people beyond the borders, beyond the doors, beyond our, our own community. And there are so many aspects of division in the church. So as we come together, what we're given is scandal, not flavor. What we're given is, is, is terrible example, not light. So we have to always examine ourselves. What is my role as a Christian? What is, what is Jesus saying to me? Because if my actions are not seen by the world as the actions of Christ, then religion's a farce. Then religion's a scam. It, and you know, all those atheistic leaders are right. Opium of the people. And then, in our current society, you see the protesters, the marching, the hysteria. The pendulum swinging to the other direction. And some of those are authentic. Can't say they all are, but some are authentic. Fighting for the rights and working. Not only fighting, not only protesting, not only carrying a banner. I don't carry banners. I never protested. I never walked in a, in a march. That's, everyone has their own style. But we need to listen to the voice of Christ and be the salt. Give flavor to this earth. Give light to this earth. The earth needs it. We need it. When we come to church, we need to see the light within each other and experience the, the, the zest of faith in each other. So when we say, I'm praying for so-and-so, we really mean it. And we, we, we're proud to share that prayer with others, whether it's just for someone who is dying, whether it's someone who is dead, whether it's someone for healing. When we say we are praying for you, we want the world to know it. The world needs your light, Jesus is saying. The n world needs your flavor, your zest, your potential. And doing nothing and going to the corners of your own room is not enough. Mentally, intellectually, spiritually, even Paul, in his beautiful letter today, challenges us, not with the sublimity of words, but faith in Jesus Christ. You don't have to get fancy. Just do it. Do charity. Do love. Do caring. And as a matter of fact, if I have a suggestion, I'd like, to, in a few weeks, we're going to have Lent. I would like to offer this section of Isaiah 58 as a great meditation for any of us during the season of Lent. Take a line a day. And, and think of the ramifications of sharing my bread with the hungry, sheltering the oppressed and the homeless, clothing the naked when we see them, not turning our back on those who need us. Because then, then the fruition of Lent will come true. Well, we as Christians look at the fruition of Lent as the resurrection the optimism of life eternal. But here on earth, it comes truth too, because if you remove from your midst oppression, false accusation, malicious speech and action, if you bestow your bread on the hungry and satisfy the afflicted, then your light, our light, will shine in the darkness and the gloom shall be removed for all nations. But it starts here with me. And then it reverberates through the family and the neighborhood. I read a speech given by one of the cardinals in Philadelphia recently, and he addressed the idea of the nuns, N-O-N-E-S, again. And he says one of the primary reasons why people, young people, are checking off N-O-N-E-S is because those who were family members, the adults in the family, weren't role models, didn't live their faith. They went to church, but they didn't live their faith. It's not me saying that. But you know it's the answer. 
because we need to live our faith and pass it on to our family and friends. And the world outside needs our light. The world outside needs our zest, our flavoring. Otherwise, we might as well be trampled underfoot. Jesus used great metaphors that I'm sure he aggravated the life out of some people. I'm sure he got under their skin. I hope I'm following him correctly.